Being an expert in the field of archaeology has to be very rewarding. The best of that field travel the world discovering the secrets of our past while simultaneously leading us into the future with their findings. Where would we be as a human race without their hard work? Having said that, it's not always the easiest job. You've got to be fearless. Foreign countries, undiscovered cultures, wild animals, unpredictable weather. The list goes on. Do you think you could hack it? You might change your mind after you see these videos. 15 Horrifying Archaeological Discoveries Hanging Coffins We've all seen the typical graveyard and cemetery. Whether you're visiting a loved one or you're seeing it in a movie, the sight of tombstones isn't anything new. Once you see it, you pretty much know what you're looking at. But now, what if we told you that some graveyards aren't always in the ground? We say this because China's got some hanging coffins. What are those mysterious sky graveyards all about? Coming out of the Gizhou province in southwestern China are around 30 caskets that are anchored on a limestone rock. This is all about 30 meters to the side of a cave, and this is no modern graveyard. The history centers back hundreds of years. Inside these coffins and on the outside are fragments of clothes, bones, and other materials. No, China's coffins aren't just up in the sky for no reason. The literature says that this is a sign of piety. The higher that the coffins were placed, the more respectful it was to the gods. This reasoning isn't all that concrete as some believe that it's just simply prevented animals from poaching the bodies. No matter what the reason for these hanging corpses is, it's quite the sight to be seen. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. If this archaeological discovery shocked the whole world, imagine being the archaeologist who discovered it. But horrifying discoveries are just a part of the gig, so this mysterious humanoid skeleton could mean a lot of things. It appears smaller than, say, a regular human head. So it could be the infamous Flores Man, or something like it, discovered in Indonesia. They were a species of small archaic humans that inhabited the island of Flores until the arrival of modern humans about 50,000 years later, the world's last of the Hobbit. The fossils date to between about 100,000 to 60,000 years ago, and individuals stood approximately 3 feet 6 inches tall, had tiny brains, large teeth for their small size, shrugged forward shoulders, receding foreheads, and relatively large feet due to their short legs. Despite their small body and brain size, they made and used stone tools, hunted small elephants and large rodents, coped with predators such as giant Komodo dragons, and may have used fire. Could these remains be the infamous Flores Hobbit? Share your ideas in the comments and let the world know with the hashtag Sweet Topic. Poison Books Everybody's heard the phrase, reading is fundamental. It's one of those phrases that's been passed down through the years to get people excited about reading. With technology growing every single day and new types of apps dropping in the app store, Sometimes books fall by the wayside, and sometimes books are just downright poison. That's not a bit of fiction because some toxic green pigments were used to once color everything from fake flowers to book covers. Unfortunately, that pigment could kill you. And now there's a museum conservator named Melissa Tadone who's doing her best to try and track down those poisonous books. Hopefully she survives in doing so. Now these books are poisonous because of their lines with arsenic. They were made before the hazards were brought to life, and unfortunately for many readers around the world, some of these books are still sitting on the shelves out there. Melissa is the one who heads the Poison Book Project, which happens to be an ongoing investigation that explores the history of those books while also trying to track them down. And that's great, because if it was left to us, we wouldn't go near those books with a 10-foot pole. Witch Marks when it comes to caves, they can be spooky places. Not only that, but they often lead to many accidents among cave divers. If they're not spooky enough, they're about to get spookier. Because in one cave in Nottinghamshire, there are believed to be witch marks. This is one cave that you probably don't want to get stuck in. That's because these marks are believed to be from the 17th and 18th centuries and were found within the limestone. They were found at Cresswell Crags, Nottinghamshire. It turns out that they might be the biggest concentration of protective marks found within British caves. Also known as apotropaic, the marks were scribbled into the cave surface to prevent evil spirits from entering from the underworld. Before they were considered witch markers, researchers believed the marks to be graffiti. 
but since then they've been reclassified. The people that discovered it were Haley Clark and Ed Waters from Subterranea Britannica. That's a charity that has members who seem to have a passion for the underground world which include the world of caves. We just hope that they don't turn up any real live witches. <laughs> Creepy burial suits. We've already covered graveyards that rest in the sky. Now we turn into a different type of burial method. Imagine being buried in jade. Thanks to the Han Dynasty, this was an actual thing. Dating back to 6000 BC, the Chinese had started to get big into using jade for everything from rituals to weapons. But it didn't stop there. If you were wealthy enough, you could be buried in a jade-made suit. The first known jade manufacturing occurred around 3300 to 2300 BC. They sourced the jade from Mongolia and then started to create jade objects in the shapes of things like pig dragons or other types of dragons. And then, because of the durability and colors of the jade, the Chinese began to associate it with the soul, associating it with protective qualities and even immortality of the human essence. This was why they started to bury people in them. They believed that if you were buried in one of these jade suits, you could become immortal. At least, your soul would. We here at the Supreme don't have any problem with that, but we think those suits might be a little too hot for the living. <laughs> Mort safes. Protecting graves isn't a new thing. There have always been grave robbers, especially around the 18th century. This prompted something called the Mort safe. This was an 18th century invention and it was designed to protect graves from body snatchers. Coming right out of Scotland, there was a big demand for human cadavers because medical students needed to learn. But where would you find bodies? This question led to a lot of body snatching back in this period. Of course, some donated their bodies, but when the demand outpaced the supply, the body snatchers did their thing. They used to actually dig up newly buried bodies and then sell them to schools. That's where the mort safe came in, and there were many different types of them. Some were in cages and others were made from heavy stone tables. Some even had concrete in them. A lot of the designs were mort safe with a plate being placed over the coffin and then rods being inserted down into the plates. This would provide a very heavy form of protection. And then the heavy iron frame was buried with the coffin. It was only removed when the body decayed and had no more value. The beauty of the Mort safe was that it could be used over and over and over again. We're kind of happy that this doesn't happen today because that would be a pretty gruesome sight. <laughs> Creepy wooden statues. Today, when you see a doll or a statue, maybe even an action figure, they're well crafted and designed to look like a specific thing. No one would classify a statue today as horrifying, but when you're looking at one of the oldest statues ever found at Chan Chan, you can't expect them to be the prettiest thing around. This was the case when archaeologists excavating in Peru as they came across the largest pre-Columbian ancient site in the Americas. On this site were around 20 wooden statues that are around 800 years old. Despite looking a little scary, they realized that climate change was affecting their appearance. And now, since the archaeologists have found them in time, they might be able to save them. It's pretty fascinating that these statues were able to survive such harsh conditions in the warm climate over the years. They were found buried on Earth at the entrance of the site and faced a lot of damage from the sun. But they've been saved, and maybe after some cleaning up, they won't look as scary. <laughs> Plague masks. There's an image out of history that's often terrifying, and the reason for these images is even more terrifying. We're talking about plague masks. At first sight, they look like the character of the penguin out of Batman. They're usually long-beaked white masks that cover the entire face, minus the eyes. And they're called plague masks because they were worn during the worst eras of human existence. It started around the Black Death. This disease killed millions of people in the 14th century. And to the 17th century, there was still some very serious sickness going around. Because of this, there was a doctor named Charles Delorme who designed an outfit for doctors which consisted of a long coat, gloves, boots, and a wide-brimmed hat. In addition to this, they have long wooden canes. This was so they didn't have to touch any of the patients. What stands out from the uniform was the mask. The mask did make doctors look a lot like birds. The beaks usually extended around six inches. 
Now, before doctors knew about germs, they kind of had to just guess what was happening with each plague, and their best guess was bad air. And these masks were designed to prohibit the bad air from getting where it wasn't supposed to be. As bad as it sounds, the masks people wore today when the world shut down looked a little bit better than the old style. Plague masks seem to be something better suited for Halloween. The Woman from Limb Statue This seems to be a consensus over the years that's remained today. Don't touch a statue. Statues are for looking. They're usually there to represent something. This means that there's a minimal reason why anyone should put their hands on them. But when it comes to this next statue, there are a few more sinister reasons as to why people wouldn't want to touch them. Back in the year 1878, there was a small statue that was pure limestone found in Lim, Cyprus. It was later dated to be from around 3500 BC. In addition to the limestone deposits, there was also found to be a bit of copper. At first glance, there wasn't much separating this statue from the hundreds of other ones that were cross-shaped from that period. With the statue, there's a debate up in the air about whether or not the statue represents fertility or a crude depiction of a goddess whose name has been lost to time. And because of the unknown origin and the fact that there's never been a creator found in history, it's believed to be a terrible curse attached to the statue. Because of that, there's no human contact with it. It's behind the glass box and no one's even allowed to touch it with gloves. Call us crazy, but we don't even want to touch it. <laughs> Orkney Hood Today, there are plenty of people around the world who wear hoodies. Hoods aren't often something that's feared or associated with something terrible. There are, of course, a few exceptions to that rule. One of them is the Orkney Hood, dubbed history's creepiest headwear. It comes from around 1700 years ago from the Scottish people and has nothing to do with fashion. It was first discovered in the year 1867, and the Orkney Hood is believed to be the oldest sample of textiles in Scottish history. Even though it's so old, it's still pretty well preserved, which allows historians to do a nice deep dive into its history. Now the research isn't fully clear on what the Orkney Hood was used for, and there's a little bit of debate going on. It's the look of the hood that makes it look creepy, and the only thing the researchers can seem to agree on about this hood is that it was woven for about four people, comes from the fabric of a wealthy person, and was designed for a child. <laughs> Mystery Toy Coffins What's creepier than a full-length coffin? Maybe a mini coffin. Plus, maybe if you add a little satanic spell to it, yeah, we'd consider that a little creepy. It was discovered around 1836 when a group of boys had gone out to the slopes of Arthur Seat in Edinburgh. They did so to hunt for some rabbits. Unfortunately, instead of rabbits, they found a bunch of mini coffins. They were found specifically on a little spot on the northeast side of the hill. This was when the boys found a small cave in the rock. 17 miniature coffins were found. Out of the 17 coffins, 8 of them had survived to today. They're now on display at the National Museum of Scotland. The one thing that stands out about these is the mystery. Nobody knows the origin. No one knows who owned them. No one knows a lot about them. But that doesn't stop many people from forming their conclusions. Some believe that the coffins represented lost loved ones. Others believe that they were just there to represent death. But one thing's for sure, the lure and mystery just make them spookier. <laughs> Mummified Monk Remember what we said earlier about not touching the statues? Well, this next one proves to be even more true because sometimes the statue itself can be a burial place. This is all about a monk who was mummified inside the statue. It's a unique way to be preserved. The statue itself is nearly a thousand years old. The mummy sits inside a Buddha statue. It just wasn't any old Buddha statue either. It was a gold painted one made of paper mache and survived a pretty long time. The darkest part about this is that the one who was mummified inside of the statue did it himself. He wasn't buried after he was dead. It was part of a self-mummification process that took years. It included meditation, starvation, dehydration, and even poisoning. This was all in the hopes of enlightenment. The mummy inside was found after a CT scan at the Meander Medical Center in the Netherlands revealed the skeleton inside. It wasn't exactly a shocking discovery, as the skeleton was already known by the exhibition organizers who had it on display in the Drents Museum. It had been part of an exhibition that showcased all types of mummies. That's not to say that there weren't any surprises. There were several samples taken from organs. 
they found paper scraps that had been printed with ancient Chinese characters. This was a good indicator that the high-status monk may have been worshipped as a Buddha. Even so, the way he died was pretty terrible. It shows his dedication to meditation. Mysterious Skeleton It's a skeleton that almost looks like it belongs to an alien. It's downright horrifying when you look at it. With its giant head and overly skinny body, it's safe to say that with one glance, you wonder about its origin. It's called the Atacama Skeleton, but people have abbreviated it to Atta. Even though the head might look huge in images, the skeleton itself is only about 6 inches long. The grim part about this whole thing is that it belongs to a human fetus found in 2003. The location where it was found is once a deserted Chilean town in the Atacama Desert, hence the name Atacama Skeleton. DNA that was done in 2018 on the premature fetus skeleton had shown unusual mutations that could be associated with dwarfism and scoliosis, but those findings were later disputed, which makes the skeleton even more mysterious. Because if it weren't dwarfism or scoliosis, then why did it look like this? Since then, there have been numerous studies trying to figure out the origin of the skeleton and the reasons why it looks the way it does, but that's all still up for debate. What do you think the reason is? Giant Alien Head It looks like a character out of Crash Bandicoot, but there's no doubt that there's a lot of history behind this next item even just by looking at it. It was a large-sized, well-preserved bronze mat that was recently discovered at the Sang Sing Dwe ruins. It was one relic, unlike the others that survived in a good shape. It's being held as one of the largest bronze masks found in the area, and maybe even the largest in the Shang and Zhou dynasties. The measurements are as follows. The widest part, from the tip of the ear to the other, is about 136 centimeters, and the height is rushing around 75 centimeters. That's a pretty big statue. During the excavation, defined as a mass, there were a bunch of other relics found as well, but none of them were as preserved as this one. The belief is that the bronze mask may have been designed and then placed into the pit, and it was found. It could have been due to some sort of sacrificial scene, but more research is going to be needed. Devil's Codex It's a book that you probably don't want to come across because it has some horrifying depictions of the devil himself. It's called the Devil's Codex, or the Codus Gigas, located in the National Library of Sweden. It's an illuminated manuscript that comprises the life's work of one lone monk, but it's also inexplicably decorated with a portrait of Satan himself. In addition to having this horrifying find, it's also the largest medieval manuscript in the world. This is pretty impressive, given that it was done by one monk. There are over 600 pages in this manuscript, and it's three feet long. It's the devil's picture that stands out the most. It was created in the 13th century and had been originally stored at the Benedictine Monastery. In addition to the frightening devil picture, this manuscript contains not only the New and Old Testament, but also a variety of other shorter texts, which addresses things like an exorcism, grammar, and a few other things. But the amazing parts of this book don't stop there. The book was handwritten, which even for the time was a huge undertaking. They say that this book would have taken 10 years to write. With all the other things that went into the book, it might have taken 20 to 30 years to complete in all actuality. This is funny because some people don't even want to do a college paper. <laughs> Witch of Pompeii From witch etchings in caves all the way down to Pompeii, we end this list with the Witch of Pompeii. No, it wasn't an actual body that was found that belonged to a witch, but it's what the witch left behind that points to all things sorcery. Pompeii has always been the place that's turned up discovery after discovery. Given the catastrophe that happened, it's never been short for wonder. You never quite know what you're going to find, even to this day. The ashes preserved so many things that give many insights into what life was like back then. One of those finds was a sorceress kit that had been discovered in the ashes of Pompeii. It was a box of small trinkets that were probably used to perform fertility and love which rules. They were also used to look for omens and birth after pregnancy. This witch's kit was found by archaeologists who were digging in the garden house of Pompeii. It wasn't until they came across this box and looked inside that they found the contents of what looked to be a witch's kit. 
The garden house was located in an area that was under recent excavation. What they found inside were round 100 little objects, which included things like buttons, necklaces, scarab beetles, miniature male genitalia, crystals, and tiny skulls. Archaeologists soon realized that they probably belonged to a witch that practiced sorcery. In addition to being owned by a witch, the person was most likely also either a servant or a slave. Also, the necklaces that were found were probably worn during rituals rather than to look fancy. It just goes to show that no matter how many years have passed, whether we're a witch or just an average civilian, your stuff may be found by future generations. Archaeologists will continue to find items that shock us on the regular. If it's not teaching us about history, it might be a little horrifying as this list has shown us. Who knows what's still buried beneath the surface of the earth in places that we haven't discovered yet. Whether it's a witch's kit or coffins in the sky, one thing's for sure, history is a weird place.